Alrighty, losers, listen up. I'm here to be your Mr. Miyagi, your Kakashi, your Obi-Wan Kenobi. And if you don't know what any of those three are, then get the f off my video. So let's get right into it, shall we? So the first tip is a really easy one, but I have to get out of the way first for the second tip. So the first tip is being able to silently open up doors. So if you just aim and open up the door at the same time, you will crack open the door, creating a lot less noise, especially when hitting the flank. This helps a lot instead of blatantly opening the door or kicking down the door. You can just do the silent door opening. It really helps catching the enemies off guard and making no noise. You can also throw a grenade in between the crack if you'd like. Tip number two is how to properly use the quick draw grip. Now this attachment is often overlooked and people think it's kind of useless, but in my opinion, it's my favorite attachment in the game and probably one of the most useful ones compared to the others. It's extremely useful when using it with equipment such as the demolition class like RPGs, C4, grenades. Being able to switch between your gun and the equipment much faster just leads to more efficient kills. You can also pick up equipment off the floor much faster as well. And to take it a step further, you can pick up grenades off the floor and throw them back faster on top of that. Now before you could do this, but the animation was so slow and there's a timer on the grenade, you were most likely going to get yourself killed. But with the quick draw grip, you can throw it back so much faster and you actually have a fighting chance of grabbing the grenade and tossing it back at the enemy. This also helps out flashbangs tremendously. Before the update, I thought flashbangs were useless. Now with the quick draw grip, you can throw the flashbang and instantly bring out your gun to breach a room. You're just much faster off the throw and allows you to breach the room when they're actually flash instead of waiting for the long animation like before. This could also lead to some really cool techniques such as a double nade throw. So you just throw a nade at a doorway and they think the door is closed that the grenade's going to take the blast but this grenade will blow up the door all while cocking the second grenade to throw right as the first grenade blows up the first door and throwing the enemy off surprise as the second nade goes through the exploded door. Lastly, if you're the driver inside the truck, this actually really helps out bringing your gun much faster. So if there's somebody shooting and you're trying to drive, uh, you know, right into OBJ and you need to quickly get some kills right out of the truck, the quick draw grip is going to be your friend in that scenario, being able to bring out your gun the fastest and shoot right away. My next tip is that explosives don't go through walls, but they do go through floors. So whether you're above or below, the explosive impact will get you. Use that information as you must as you can set up some pretty cool booby traps or if you have an RPG and you think someone's above you, just guess the spot and just give it a shot. So my next tip is with armor. So this isn't like a full in-depth guide towards armor. Uh, the armor is very fragile and there hasn't been really an updated version towards armor in a long time in you know, regards to calibers and how many extra shots you can absorb. Uh, but the way I look at it, armor really isn't a bulletproof vest, it's more like a flat jacket. You shouldn't be wearing the armor thinking that it, you're going to be bulletproof while wearing it. Uh, it all depends on the caliber and like the range you're being shot at. Like if you're in a gunfight and you're fighting against someone with 7.62 or 5.56, it's not going to make a difference if you're wearing armor or not wearing armor. It's going to take the same amount of shots. It really just comes down to like being shot at long range and preventing a one shot sniper hit on the chest from like a Mosin or like that extra nine millimeter shot by a pistol or an SMG. But if it's an SMG with a high rate of fire, it really doesn't matter at that point as it only kind of saves you for a split second, if you know what I mean. But when it comes to explosive damage, that's where it really excels. You know, being able to absorb C4, frag grenades, RPGs, uh, that's what's really gonna save your life. So I definitely suggest using it on defense as it does slow you down. Or if somebody on the other team is really spamming, you know, grenades or RPGs and whatnot, and you're just trying to live, uh, heavy armor or light armor in that case as well is really going to protect you against these explosives. You'd be surprised on how many times I shoot an RPG at someone and they end up living simply because they have heavy armor. Obviously, if it shoots under their feet, they're most likely going to die. But if you shoot it within about five feet, they'll actually live compared to everybody else who didn't have armor. So in the right scenario, it does thrive. So my next tip is something we all learned as kids, and that is to look left and right before crossing. Now you'd be surprised on how many players don't do this. It's insane how many times I see players walk past an enemy and either get shot in the back or leave that enemy and it was an easy kill for them and that enemy ends up killing your teammates in the process. 
Now you don't have to check every single little corner, but by doing a quick glance left and right will save you in so many scenarios. You see me naturally do this all the time. If you're wondering how I stay alive for so long and go on these long streaks, it's because I'm looking left and right. It's because I do the quick little glance to make sure my back and my sides are clear and that I can clean up any enemies that aren't paying attention or spot the enemy before he spots me. My next tip is to know when to grow a pair and go on the offensive. Now this happens so many times when you're zero waves attacking and you're trying to capture an OBJ. Nearly the whole enemy team is dead on the other side except for like one guy, right? You have five guys on OPJ, you're capturing it, and then boom, it's blocked by enemy. Most players I see tend to tense up and freeze and just end up sitting in a corner camping and just waiting for somebody to magically kill the guy who's blocking the objective or for the guy to magically hop off OBJ. It doesn't work like that. You have to find the last guy or you're not going to capture. It's not gonna magically get handed to you. You have to go in these crunch time scenarios and find the last guy for your team. Most of the time, the last guy on OBJ on the enemy team is sitting in a corner waiting for reinforcements to come. He's not gonna go all by himself as the last one alive to clear OBJ by himself. He's gonna wait for his reinforcements and play it safe. So of course you gotta find that guy before those reinforcements come and wipe you out. Because once those reinforcements come, I promise you, you will lose. You're gonna die either way. So you might as well try and go out winning by finding the last guy and getting that objective captured. Don't freeze up and lose for the game. You know, make sure that you're smart about it and that when it's blocked by an enemy, you're constantly trying to find him in his hiding spot and you start clearing the corners. Next tip is knowing when to use specific ammo carriers with certain loadouts. So my biggest one is not being able to use any ammo carriers with loadouts such as a shotgun or sniper rifle. You can get away with zero ammo carriers simply because it starts you off with so much ammo to begin with and because they are one shot kill guns, you don't really need all that ammo. Most likely you're not going to run through all of that ammo. Plus when you spawn, you can grab some extra ammo in your ammo crate before taking off the battle. Uh, so say for the shotgun, you can pick up an extra seven rounds, or if you have a sniper, you can pick up an extra five, and you'd have like an extra 25 rounds for your sniper rifle. That is plenty of ammo. You're not gonna go through all of that ammo, and you can invest your points in something else, or just be really light on your feet. For the most part, I'm rocking lightweight carrier, and then for certain scenarios, such as using the AS Val or for Moss with high rate of fire guns that spew a whole lot of ammo, the rocking the heavy carrier really helps with bringing extra mags, or you're using a demolition class and you want to use all three equipment slots, using the heavy carrier helps as well. The next tip is a pretty crazy pro tip that I just found out from the dev live stream, and that is you can't hear uh, enemy reloads. I never knew that. So whenever you're reloading, the enemy can't hear you reloading. Now you can hear everything else, such as you know footsteps, using equipment, uh, proning, um, but you can't hear whenever you reload because they don't have it into the game. And most games actually don't have it, believe it or not, uh, which I didn't know until it was pointed out. Uh, but yeah, so use that information as you please. If you're you know, going on a stealthy flank and you just kill the guy, don't be afraid to reload because the enemy can't hear you. Sadly, I haven't been able to really play night maps as they haven't really been popping up uh, from NWI's limited time playlist lately. Uh, but the only one I really got for you guys is to use tracer rounds at night. Uh, for the most part at nighttime, it is really hard to see where your bullets are impacting and see where the bullets, you know, hit the certain services wherever you're shooting at somebody. Thankfully, with tracer rounds at night, especially with night vision, you can see the tracer rounds much more clearly and see where your shots are going. So it really does help and it's probably the only time I'd say tracer rounds are actually useful. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. You know, I set this up in hoping you guys can become a better player. If you're trying to improve even further on that, remember, you know, aim comes over time as well as map knowledge also comes over time as you try uh, to become a better player. So not everything can just be handed. You do have to learn some things along the way, uh, but hopefully some of this knowledge could speed that up and make you better players overall after today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button for more. Leave a like if this really helped you out. This is MG Gibbs. I'm out. Deuces.